Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about secret lair as a investment and I use that term very carefully because you should never invest in magic cards unless you have a you know, a home, you have extra money, you paid off your student loans. Uh, th those things, even though you know student loans have big interest, uh, those things you should take care of first. Uh, no one should be putting money into magic cards before they put money into their own lives as much as possible 401ks especially if your employee offers matching 401k would be such a sin not to do that because it's honestly free money um your you know six thousand dollars to your ira if you don't have that there no one should be investing in magic cards beyond you know having actual investments so if your in, whole investments in magic cards i think you're doing it completely wrong because at any moment in time, the market can tank and it has shown. I mean, the market, everyone said it would recover. Yes, it's recovering, but uh, I think I made the right decision to sell when I did, even though many people considered it one of the lower points. Now, if I had 75, uh, so apparently you can buy 15 of these. I assume that you can only buy 10 and pass uh, because that was a number, but they've upped the number. Now, will the number go up to 20? Would a number go up to 25? I could see the number even going up to 100. So you could buy 100 of these from one buyer. And even if you wanted to buy more, uh, what would stop you? You could just use a PO box or you use a different address. You can use a company address. You can use your parents' address. You can use a friend's address, right? I mean, Weds was able to order somewhere around 300 Mythic editions from him uh, using subscribers. And actually, the subscribers donated to him for a charity that has never happened since that time. But if someone as lazy as Weds can get 300 copies of something, and that was two per customer, imagine how many copies of this you could get. You could get 1,000, 2,000 if you wanted to. It, they're not going to be too picky, right? They're not going to... Eventually, maybe there's no cap to it which would be interesting, and the cap would just be a time cap. Knowing Wizard of the Coast, I do know that they will reuse the artwork for specialty product. So I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up that I fully expect within maybe a year or two, these cards will be reprinted with their artwork that you currently see. Because promos, even very special cards... FNN promos, uh, judge promos, they've all been reprinted with uh, the newer, quote, newer artwork. So do I like it? Yeah. I don't think you're going to lose money on this product. I would be very, very uh, bullish. on. So imagine a game store, and let's take the magic products that a game store could possibly sell. They could sell a booster box. Well, if you open the booster box, you lose 50% of your value, and that's retail. In fact, buy list, you probably can $25 buy list from a booster box. It's not bad. Buy list, right? And that's the actual selling point. And if you were going to do a mass booster box opening, you would probably want to put it on YouTube to get some ad revenue, but you would also need to hire your employees to do it. I guess you could get some people to do it for free. But would they take cards? Would they steal cards if they were random strangers, right? So on top of that, we have a um, the Challenger decks or the Brawl decks. They're good, but they're kind of pre-constructed decks, meaning they limit, they're not really encouraging people to continue to buy more of them. Like there's only a set limit of Challenger decks that anyone would ever want to have unless you were, again, speculating on them, which... You should not be because of rotation. Challenger decks are really good when they're in standard. And a Pioneer might have some effect to it, but they're really, really bad when they rotate out. Now, EDH decks are always good in my opinion, um, but sometimes they print a ton. Sometimes they print. It's very volatile. Everything else, even single cards, are, is extremely volatile because if a dude comes and he has 10 Mox Opals, and Mox Opal is not banned yet, and there's rumors of it being banned, you still have to buy it. Like, at least that's my policy, is because if I want the rest of the collection, I can't just pick, okay, I'm going to buy all your collection except the Mox Opals. 
then the guy will take the collection to a different store, right? And even at 60, 70% of retail, which is my buy list, it's the highest buy list of TCG player. So TCG player has this mode where you log in and then you flip the thing and then it changes everything into a buy list of the highest store out of its thousands of stores. So it's a really, and I, I did this A, cause it's easy. I saved time on employees having to price stuff. And B, um, I mean, honestly, they could just ship it off to TCG player. Yes, they would have to. So what my, my deal was, was I would give you cash today. There's no waiting, there's no shipping, there's no you know condition discrepancy. I'm gonna give you cash today. Otherwise, you could get this exact same amount from TCG Player two to four weeks. And you know, Magic players really need their money today. So on top of all of this really uh, great stuff, in my opinion, um, yeah, it, it's uh, quite fascinating uh, when you talk about the logistics of Secret Lair and you see local game stores and Facebook sellers, marketplace sellers, and Macario, as soon as it drops, they want to flip it right away for just a few dollars extra cash. It's not bad uh, for them, and it's not bad for the uh, economy of Magic. But as you will see more and more of these cards come up, it does lessen their value because it lessens how unique they are. Now, I'm expecting... Liliana of the Veil, I'm expecting Snapcaster, just because they've already had different promos for them. And they're very popular cards. I'm expecting them to be single cards, right? Where they just sell Lily of the Veil for, I think she's $60, $70 retail now. Um, hey, 50 bucks. And people would buy it because it's actually cheaper than the regular card. I'm all for a secret lair because it makes it even. The local game store can no long, cannot buy this product cheaper than you can. Rudy cannot buy this product cheaper than you can. And that's why they don't like it. Um, now, yes, the local game store can buy the product and resell it for more money, but then the customer will feel bad because they're like, oh, I missed the opportunity. That's kind of not where you want to be going as a local game store. I have thought about that exact scenario, but I've just cut magic out. out outside of personal usage. I don't want to carry magic in my store. It just doesn't, it doesn't attract the right people. And to be quite frank, it attracts the wrong people. Uh, like it, there was this dude who was casing my store on, and then he was setting, setting up a buy to, I think, rob me. I have it on my Facebook. So it's pinned on my Facebook, and it's a very interesting story. And I, and so I'm not going to buy any more Funko figures because I think the Funko community is all a bunch of shady people. Uh, he said he had three million YouTube subscribers, and it's all on it's on my Facebook pin, MTG line. And he said he had 100,000 LinkedIn. But then I went on and just typed his name, which is what you should do on LinkedIn, and he had zero followers. And that's it. I mean, you know, you got a dude lying out of his teeth. And then the other place that he supposedly worked at, which was a wet, wet wedding venue, I was very curious as to like if he actually worked there. So I, I just Facebook chatted him and I gave him a phone call and the person had no idea who he was. So A, he made up a fake job, which I was 100% sure it was fake. But just to confirm, because just the way that he presented his whole, he was making fake social media, fake numbers, and a fake job. And then he wanted to set up a Funko buy to rob me. And I'm probably going to report him to the police. But you don't even need to do that because this product has more value than any Funko buy that you can make, right? So in my opinion, why should I buy from, why should I buy single magic cards from customers that some of them are great, some of them are not so great. And the cards can be fake, they could be stolen. There's other factors that you have to deal with. And instead of just buying this, like this is more profitable, it's more presentable for sale, there's not conditioning issues. What's the issue? Like why would I want, 
if I can order 15 of these $750, that's about the size of our good collection. So it's not even a quantity issue, which I have a lot of issue. I mean, when people come to sell you a single card, it's kind of not really worth the time to buy it sometimes if it's just a standard card. Because like, how much money am I going to make on a resale? On this, very easy. It's like I'm a store. I'm buying it from Wizard of the Coast for 50 bucks, and then I'm hoping to sell it for 60 So I'm hoping to make $150 from easy sales. Hi, guys. Or I could hold it and hope it goes up in price, which is also not bad. You can't do that with single cards anymore. It used to be you could hold them and hope they go up in price. But like uh, the enemy fetch lands, for instance, they're not going up in price. Even though they're not reprinted because everyone knows they will be reprinted. Hi, guys.